Hi, I'm Seth. I'm writing this note, bottling it and tossing it in the brook by my house. Writing helps me. Writing helps me keep sane. Hopefully, somebody who reads will pick it up. Come help me. It started a month ago. I was down in my basement office on my computer watching old Mystery Science Theater 3000 reruns. The phone rang next to me, but I didn't pay any attention to it. It was never for me. And on the off occasion it was, it was usually my brother, and, and half the time that we were on the phone, my nephew would be trying to grab it and talk to me himself. Mom yelled down the stairs that the phone was for me. Yeah. I lived at home with my folks. Sue me. Anyway. I picked it up. Hello, I said, paying more attention to the antics of the robots on the screen. It's begun. The voice was little more than a whisper. A plea. I didn't even recognize the voice. Excuse me? I asked, wondering who on earth was calling. They've come. I don't have much time, Jeff. You told me to call... If what we did caused trouble. Now a little worried, I said, I think you have the wrong number. This is Seth, not Jeff. Don't go outside! Completely freaked out, I, I disconnected the call. It must have been some prank caller, but I wasn't amused. Rattled, I, I put the matter behind me. Much later, I finished watching the video and shut the lights off to head upstairs. It was pitch black, but I knew the way. The dark seemed a little more oppressive this time, though. I shrugged off the feeling and went upstairs. As I passed through the living room, I chanced to look out the window. There were people outside, on a walk or something. I checked my watch. It said 3 a.m. That's weird, I muttered. Stumbled up to my upstairs room and drifted off to sleep. I was a fool that first night. If I'd recognized what I'd seen, I would have saved myself the terror and just stepped outside. The next morning, the news was on. And odd. Since my dad usually turned to the sports channel before he went off to work, I didn't even glance at it as I threw on a tie and stumbled into the bathroom. An uneasy feeling crept into my guts as I did so. I realized I usually had to fight for the bathroom space. But today... There wasn't a sound. I peeked out of my room and saw the first door was open. But the glass storm door wasn't. There wasn't a sound. Looking outside, I saw there were some people as I had seen the night before. I opened the door, and immediately their heads snapped towards me. I recoiled and leapt inside as quickly as I could, feeling something catch at my ankle as I did so. Their faces were fixed in expressionless gazes, their mouths slightly agape in dripping blood. I looked down and saw one right next to the porch withdrawing its arm. It had tried to grab me. With a dizzying feeling of horror, I recognized my little brother. Slamming the door, I locked it tight and stumbled back into the living room. The television was reporting a disease that was spreading south from Canada, across the U.S. I shut it off and pointlessly called out to see if anybody else was in the house. No answer. So began my solitary existence. The news ran for a few days before they were caught. I kept making the stupidest mistake, going home every night. The electricity had stayed running. I guess someone left the switch on at the factory, or maybe it's just northern New England that had been overrun, I, I don't know. The internet's been out too, so that's annoying. While the news was running, they called them zombies. Going back to that old standby, I, I guess it worked. I mean, they don't do a whole lot, They and they're definitely dead. They walk around until their legs rot out from under them, and they crawl until they literally fall to pieces. Oh, they've got legs, though. They're fast. They're fast. That's how they jumped my family, I suppose. 
and the police car that drove up to the house to see if there was any survivors. That wasn't fun to look at every morning. They overturned my car while chasing him. I'm stuck. Cops to the rescue again. They didn't really need food, so they didn't finish eating the poor guy. But they dismembered him. That's why he couldn't get up and join them. I could see him gnawing his teeth fruitlessly, though. For about a week, a guy on the radio hopelessly pointed out that they were falling to pieces, so all we needed to do was wait them out. Then he got impatient and went outdoors. Nobody's been on the radio for two weeks. I'm in trouble, though. You see, the house has no food left. I... I can't wait for them to all fall down dead all over again. I made a couple expeditions to the general store. Lucky, I had that sword collection upstairs. They're all too slow to catch me when I run. There's so many that I sometimes panic. Last time, they, they nearly got me. I broke the front door, getting back in, and now the cold sweeps in every night, and I can see one standing outside of the porch right now. I'm not ten feet from where I am writing this. You're safe indoors. Don't ask me why they abhor coming inside. Whatever the reason, it's been my lifeline. Unfortunately, they seem to know that there's someone alive in the house. Don't ask me how. This fellow on the front steps just... He doesn't even have eyes anymore. Maybe they can't hear heart... Maybe they can hear heartbeats or, or smell sweat or, or blood. I spent a couple of days naming them. Some of the faces I recognized and gave their old names to them. Uh, some old gangs have been hanging around here for the past couple weeks, slowly dropping in numbers as they fall to pieces. They've never wandered off, though. They're 79 who were once men and 63 who were once women out there. Once, just to see what would happen, I shot one in the head with our shotgun. You know, to see if the old shoot a zombie in the head and they die for good adage had been true, so <laughs> they've actually got 79 who were once men, 62 who were once women, and one who was once a woman and decided to keep standing even after losing about 80% of its head. And I'm down to one shotgun shell. So, they wait. I'm... And I'm losing it. I mean... I talked to myself constantly, and I ate a st I ate a stuffed animal last night. Cotton went down hard, but it felt good to have something in my stomach again. There are no fruit trees around. And anyway, it's November. Water's been getting scarcer. The taps stopped working eight days ago. And luckily, I filled the bathtub in every bottle that I could find before it stopped. The lamp's getting brighter, I can hear a buzzing sound. I wonder if the power's going out. Well, that wasn't fun. Total loss of power for four days. Ever try sleeping in the dark knowing that there are things just outside that'll kill you and make you one of them the very first chance that they get? Probably since these things are... everywhere. As far as I can tell. Quick update. I mentioned Herschel. The guy on my porch. One of his legs fell off. So he's sitting down. Sniffing at it. Thank God they lose all their higher brain functions. And I'm pretty sure the soul isn't held captive in these things. And... It's all the disease, or whatever, trying to spread itself as far as it can in population. I don't know if you've noticed this, but the animals just don't seem affected. It's, it's a small comfort. Of course, they die, they eat the flesh, but they don't get back up once they die. It's weird, huh? I'm getting hungry. 
and desperate. And maybe, just maybe, I can load the old 22 and bag a squirrel from inside. But how do I get it? Uh, on the one hand, I'm a bit more optimistic that you're out there now, whoever you are, than the power could, couldn't have come back if there weren't people out there working to restore order. I, I'm feeling lucky. <laughs> Time to grab a sword. So drop this in the brook. <sighs> Maybe this whole thing is is almost over. Maybe on the other hand. If it is almost over. Why are there so many fresh faces out today? <laughs>